Today we are roasting beets. In the last 20 years, beets went from complete obscurity to being on every restaurant menu, usually in the form of a salad with blue cheese or goat cheese. It is a wonderful way to serve beets, and that's what we'll make today. But first, let's resolve a few beet misunderstandings. Beets come in many different colors. Here is the most common variety. It's very dark with a magenta hue, but you'll also see yellow beets and candy stripe beets. Most people new to cooking beets tend to reach for the lighter colored yellow and candy striped beets, and that's a mistake. Those lighter colored beets are a gamble. They tend to be vegetal, not as sweet, and sometimes even bitter. The dark magenta beets are the most predictable in flavor and are universally sweet and mild. Nothing against other colors. I cook them all and especially like mixing different varieties. Now about roasting. There are two completely different techniques that the restaurant menus refer to as roasting when it comes to beets. The first one is wrapping the whole beet in foil and baking it until soft. In this case, no browning develops and the resulting flavor and texture is homogeneous. The second method involves cutting up and oiling raw beets, then baking them until they brown. In my opinion, this method is much more interesting. The flavor is more complex and the texture is more varied because you get crispy edges and juicy inside. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's preheat the oven to 400 degrees and prep the beets. Beets often come with leaves. In the early summer, when the beets are the size of golf balls, the leaves are delicious and can be cooked like Swiss chard. But most of the year, they are not very pleasant and I discard them. Getting rid of them as soon as you bring the beets home will save you space in the fridge. The roots without leaves will last a very long time in a plastic bag in the fridge. When you're ready to cook, cut off the top of the root where the stems were growing from. Then trim the top area with a paring knife. It has nooks and crannies that harbor grit and it's best to remove them. Cut off the long tail on the opposite end and discard all the trimmings. Now let's go to the sink and I'll show you how to wash the beets. I designate one sponge for vegetables and keep it soap free. Scrub the beet skin under running water and this will remove all the sand and little hairs that grow out of the roots. There is no need to peel the beets. Dry them thoroughly on paper towels before cooking since wet things don't brown. You can also store them cleaned and dried in a Ziploc bag in the fridge for about five days. I decided to switch to a plastic board here. The beet juice is easier to wash off plastic than off wood. I like to cut my beets in half and then into wedges. For a tiny beet, you'll get four pieces. For larger beets, cut toward the center point, from pole to pole to end up with wedges. This shape will allow you to develop a crispy edge that will contrast nicely with juicy interior. Put your beets onto a shallow baking sheet that can hold them in a single layer and sprinkle generously with salt and pepper. Drizzle with olive oil. I'm using about a quarter cup here, but you can adjust the amount based on how many beets you have. Then rub the oil all over the pieces. This will help your pieces brown evenly. Arrange your beets in a single layer on one of the flat sides. The more contact with the pan, the more browning. And browning equals yum. Put the beets in the 400 degree oven on the bottom rack of using gas and middle of using electric. After 25 to 30 minutes, the thin edge should become crisp and the beet should be tender when poked with a knife. But keep in mind that a beet never gets as mushy as a potato. It's hard to tell if beets brown because their color is so dark to begin with, but they will become slightly blistered on the bottom. For such little beets, I don't bother to cook them on the other side. But if your pieces aren't tender yet, Flip them and give them another 10 minutes in the oven. My beets have cooled a bit and I'm ready to assemble my salad. I'll start with a pile of watercress, though any tender greens would work. A pile of beets. Don't forget to taste and adjust for salt, of course. A sprinkle of pecans or a nut of your choice. A drizzle of acidity. Mine is pomegranate molasses, but you can use balsamic vinegar or lemon juice. 
and some creamy goat cheese. The blue cheese and feta are also lovely. See, what's so scary about that? Do you have a vegetable that makes you nervous? Leave me a comment and I'll put it on my list of videos to make. Just don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel so that you don't miss it. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.